This is a well-known case, but I wanted to cover it as Richard Huckle was, in my opinion, pure evil. He was a man who likely raped and abused over 200 children, including babies, in East Asia between 2006 and 2014, with him videoing his horrific crimes and bragging about his behaviour online to other sick individuals. The scale of his offending is absolutely horrific. Huckle was eventually imprisoned, but just three years into his sentence, Karma caught up with him, and Huckle himself met a horrific end, with him being tortured and murdered. The life and death of Richard Huckle is both horrific and fascinating. Welcome to Evil Among Us. Richard Huckle was born on the 14th of May 1986 in Ashford, in Kent in the UK. There are no reports of issues in Huckle's childhood in terms of abuse or neglect, but it appears that he was described as a quiet individual and a, quote, bit of a loner by people who knew him, but generally he was considered to be inoffensive. However, as I've covered on many occasions, pure evil doesn't wear a sign. These people don't have horns, they look perfectly ordinary. At the age of 16, Huckle took part in a month-long expedition to visit a school in Namibia, South Africa. He then returned to the UK and planned to take his gap year in East Asia. Huckle's first confirmed offences occurred during his gap year between 2005 and 2006 when he would have been between 19 and 20 years old. During this time he travelled to East Asia and volunteered as a helper at orphanages and schools. In March 2006, Huckle kidnapped and raped two sisters aged four and six while he was in Cambodia. Later that same year, Huckle moved to Malaysia and raped at least one child, a five-year-old girl, and this was a victim that he'd repeatedly target for the next seven years until she was 12 years old. Huckle returned to Malaysia in 2007 and raped a three-year-old girl. He again repeatedly victimised this child over the years until she was 10 years old. In between trips to Malaysia, Huckle would return to the UK and complete qualifications to help him gain access to children, including a certificate to enable him to teach English as a second language. Huckle also presented himself as a freelance photographer, so he could go freely to orphanages and schools as well as impoverished communities in order to, he claimed, raise awareness of the plight of the children and to promote the organisations that taught and housed them. Huckle would, over the years, switch between his different personas as the situation necessitated in order to gain access to children. He would present himself as a photographer to gain access to orphanages or claim he was an English teacher in order to gain access to children in schools or to gain access to people's homes. In 2011, Huckle moved permanently to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and it appears that his relocation allowed him to commit to his paedophilia on a full-time basis. Huckle would gain the trust of organisations and families he targeted by presenting himself as a Christian who was just there to do good work to help others. Once he gained their trust, he would find ways to be alone with the children, including taking them on days out, teaching them English, and teaching them photography. He would get some of his victims to introduce him to their child friends and would abuse multiple children in a single household. In 2013, Richard Huckle travelled to an orphanage in India, as shown by the picture here. There are no reports of him molesting any children at this orphanage. However, messages he posted online suggest otherwise. This will be returned to later. Huckle would score his abuse in a sickening ledger where he would give himself points based on the age of the child and the seriousness of the sexual abuse. It was from this scorecard that investigators put his total number of victims between 2006 and 2014 at between 191 and in excess of 200 children. Huckle would film many of his assaults, including one where he raped a baby, estimated to be six months old, who was seen wearing a nappy in the video. Huckle would rape and abuse children anywhere between the ages of approximately six months up until 12 years old, although the majority of his victims appear to have been between four 
and 10 years old. As well as acts of sexual violence, Huckle would also film himself degrading his victims, including urinating on the children. Huckle would also get the children to pose for him so he could take in decent photographs. In total, 20,000 images and films of Huckle's abuse were recovered from his electronic devices, but this was only what authorities could access. The pure evil of Richard Huckle is shown by his online activity, where he would share pictures and videos of his crimes, brag about his abuse of very small children, encourage others to rape children and teach them how to do this, as well as talk about his plans for the future. Huckle would make his sickening posts on the encrypted network called, quote, The Love Zone, where he would talk openly, with pride, about his offences. I'm going to go into a lot of detail about the messages he uploaded, so please be warned. This isn't a shock, this is just to illustrate how horrific this man's crimes were. Huckle bragged on this network, quote, Impoverished kids are definitely much, much easier to seduce than middle class western kids. Huckle wrote that he had, quote, fallen in love with South Asia and wrote, quote, I've gotten particularly close with one family whom I've known about six years. I have sexual contact with four of the girls in that family. And though the family obviously does not approve it, they try to work around it as they know I can be a potentially valuable asset to them in the future. Huckle stated he was going to try and marry one of these children when they turned 18, with him stating that this quote could strongly benefit me in that my partner is still quite young and I've known her since she was seven and I can influence her young mind to mould her into the perfect wife. With regards to the future, Huckle stated, quote, My ambition, once married, would be for our family to be like foster carers for children, temporary or long term. Huckle described how he would manipulate his wife into facilitating his offending, and that, quote, I would hope I would be able to pacify and influence her into not reporting me, as I would make it clear to her that she would lose her middle-class lifestyle if I got busted. He also said, quote, It's quite amazing to have stuck with the same child lover for so long, and I hope from the images you have seen, enjoyed watching her grow. It's not often in child porn you get to compare the bodies of a five-year-old and a twelve-year-old that are the same girl. I'm sure I'll have plenty more sex with her in the future. This appears to relate to the victim of the abuse for seven years, starting in 2006. As I mentioned earlier, Huckle visited at least one orphanage in India, where he apparently did not molest any children, but the following message suggests otherwise, with him stating, quote, If I were to transfer my skills learned from India and try to use them in the West, I wouldn't last a month before I found myself in a cell. My freedom relies on the hush mentality of the locals, on this type of thing. Huckle would also encourage others to abuse children and offer to guide them in how to do this. Huckle criticised paedophile manuals created by others, i.e. a guide on how to abuse children, and he wrote his own, called, quote, Paedophiles and Poverty, Child Lover Guide. In one part of this 60-page manual, he said, quote, I'd hit the jackpot, a three-year-old girl as loyal to me as my dog and nobody seemed to care. He would circulate drafts of this manuscript to other paedophiles around the world. Huckle also tried to profit off his crimes by Mm. selling the videos of him raping children on a website called, quote, Pedo Funding, where he would try to exchange this material for Bitcoin. Police were able to determine at least one video that he tried to sell involved him raping a three-year-old girl. Instead of reading out the last few messages... I'll put them on screen for you to read yourselves. Whilst Huckle was eventually arrested by officers from the British National Crime Agency, 
it was the diligent work of the Australian Federal Police which eventually led to his downfall. In June 2014, officers from the Australian Force Argos were tasked with stopping so-called quote paedophilia tourism and had uncovered an intrinsic world where Western paedophiles could help each other identify children to abuse and how to achieve this. By this time, the task force had honed in on an Australian care worker called Shannon McCool, who they believe was a key player in the love zone, acting as a site operator. When they arrested him, McCall was actually signed into the network and officers jumped at this opportunity and took on his identity to infiltrate this group. This enabled them to gather evidence against approximately 1,000 paedophiles across the world, with them providing intelligence to the various local law enforcement agencies, and this included passing information about Richard Huckle to the British National Crime Agency. On the 19th of December 2014, Huckle flew back to London Gatwick Airport from Malaysia, intending to spend Christmas with his family. Officers from the National Crime Agency were waiting for him and arrested him. They questioned Huckle, but he was uncooperative. I don't have a video of the police interview, but given that he answered no comment to all questions, it probably wouldn't add very much. Huckle was bailed to stay at his parents' house, whilst the police made further inquiries, with them seizing his laptop for analysis. The next day, Huckle got drunk and was confronted by his parents. He then admitted to raping multiple children, some as young as three years old. To their credit, his family promptly kicked him out of the house and phoned the police, begging them to rearrest him and take him into custody, which they did, with him being held in prison until his court appearances. The investigation into Richard Huckle was extensive, with officers having to watch and categorise all of the material on his computer. However, they were only able to access parts of Huckle's laptop, with him refusing to give them encryption information, which would enable them to lay bare his horrific crimes in their totality. Eventually, Huckle was charged with offences against 29 children, which was based on the offences which he had photographed or videoed, However, the prosecution stated that the true number was likely in excess of 200 children. In January 2016, Huckle pleaded not guilty to all offences and his trial was set for April 2016. However, Huckle stated that he would plead guilty but only if he was able to watch the material on his computer. I cannot see that this request was granted by the courts. Regardless, he eventually pleaded guilty to 71 offences including multiple counts of rape of children under the age of 13, multiple counts of other types of sexual assault, including putting his fingers inside their genitals, possession and distribution of child pornography, and creation of child pornography. Richard Huckle's sentence was set to occur between the 1st of June 2016 until the 3rd of June 2016 at the Old Bailey in London, with the court needing almost two days simply to go through all of the offences he committed. During these hearings, Huckle's lawyer read out a statement from him where he tried to blame his crimes on his immaturity. The statement read, quote, I really understand and acknowledge the true scale of damage it caused to the Malaysian community. I had hoped to escape this mundane life of solitude in the UK, yet was overwhelmed by the attention I received in Malaysia. I completely misjudged the affections I received from these children. My low self-esteem and lack of confidence with women was no excuse for me to use these children as an outlet. I am open and eager to rehabilitate from this offending behaviour. I don't want to become a martyr to sex tourism in Malaysia. This was all my doing as a consequence of my immaturity and I'm truly remorseful. Huckle had both a report from a psychiatrist and a pre-sentence report from probation, and both indicated that Huckle minimised his offending and blamed his actions on external factors. With the psychiatrist in particular, Huckle did not seem to grasp the seriousness of his situation, with him stating that he wanted to, quote, put all the madness behind me and to marry a woman who he could settle down with. 
Eventually, on the 3rd of June 2016, the presiding judge, Peter Rook KC, delivered his sentencing remarks. He stated, quote, Relentlessly, you preyed upon the very young, prepubescent, vulnerable children from a minority ethnic community into which you ingratiated yourself. This was a prolonged campaign of rape of the children from a small community. He described the manuscript that Huckwell produced to help others abuse children as a, quote, truly evil document. Whilst the judge was speaking, Huckle was in the dock, apparently with his hands in prayer. The judge also said, quote, You were and are sexually obsessed with children. You have spent years abusing them. In one of your postings, you stated that you had become consumed by your paedophilia. It's clear from your postings on hidden encrypted paedophile websites on the dark web and from the manual you were in the process of drafting that your life revolved around your obsession with your own sexual gratification by child sex abuse. It's also clear that, had you not been arrested, you plan to continue the same lifestyle using the expertise that you were keen to show off to and share with other abusers so as to continue your sexual exploitation of the children of such communities. You even spoke of embarking on a sham marriage to give you access to foster children. The judge then sentenced him. Richard Huckle was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum tariff of 23 years before he could apply for parole. The sentence was considered unduly lenient by many, with many questioning why Huckle was not being sent to prison for the rest of his life. However, little did everyone know, he actually was. In October 2019, Richard Huckle was incarcerated at HMP Full Sutton in Yorkshire. It's one of a number of Category A prisons in the UK, which house the worst of the worst criminals. Former residents include Dale Cregan, a gangster from Manchester who killed four people, including two police officers in 2012, and the Muswell Hill murderer, Dennis Nielsen, who killed and dismembered between 12 and 15 men in his flat in London in the late 70s and early 80s. Another prisoner at H&P Full Sutton was 30-year-old Paul Fitzgerald, a diagnosed psychopath who had fantasies of raping, killing and eating people. He had a history of violence and sexual offending. This included indecent assaults against girls in 2004 and 2006 when he was 13 and 15 years old, In 2008, he was convicted of ABH, as well as trying to commit a sexual offence. In 2016, when aged 25, he took a female prison officer hostage and threatened to stab her. Intelligence within the prison indicated that Fitzgerald would frequently walk around with a, quote, murder bag, which he would use to commit assaults. According to the reports I've read, Richard Huckle was on a vulnerable prisoner wing, due to the nature of his offences, but also the fact that he'd been assaulted on several occasions since he was sent to prison. He was on the same prison wing as Fitzgerald, and, between 10.30am and 11am on the 13th of October 2019, Huckle was sat in his cell when Fitzgerald walked in, pre-armed with a makeshift knife and a ligature. Fitzgerald closed the door and attacked Huckle, Fitzgerald first bound Huckle's hands and feet together and gagged him. Over the next hour and 15 minutes, Fitzgerald tortured Huckle, including punching him and smashing his head into the floor six or seven times, resulting in serious head injuries and breaking his jaw. He then penetrated Huckle's anus with the handle of a kitchen spoon, perforating his rectum. Fitzgerald stabbed Huckle in the neck and forced his homemade knife up his nose with so much force that the blade penetrated into Huckle's brain to a depth of three inches. Huckle was also strangled by Fitzgerald, so hard that he damaged his own hands. Prison officers were given a tip-off that something was wrong, and they went into Huckle's cell and found a scene of utter carnage. Fitzgerald was restrained, and attempts were made to save Huckle, but it was beyond saving, and was pronounced dead. His cause of death was determined to be due to strangulation and stab wounds. Later, 
Fitzgerald stated he intended to eat parts of Huckle's body and was planning on killing other prisoners, but, quote, got carried away by how much fun I was having doing what I was doing to him, so he did not have time to carry out his plans before he was discovered. Fitzgerald described his actions as being, quote, poetic justice, meeting out the ultimate punishment to Huckle for his crimes. Fitzgerald didn't show any remorse. He seemed to revel in his notoriety. He eventually got sent to court and was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 34 years before he's eligible for parole. So, that's the life, crimes and death of Richard Huckle. I now want to look at a profile of him. This is going to be quite long, but I think it needs to be, because of how evil this man was. So, where to start with Richard Huckle? I use the term evil in a lot of my videos, but in my opinion, he is at the top end of the scale of evil. Murder is horrific, but I think there's something so profoundly damaging and monstrous about those who sexually abuse children. It takes their natural trust in adults and destroys it. I've never met anyone who was sexually abused as a child who does not bear the scars of this violation. These people often have low or even no self-esteem, PTSD and other mental health issues, issues with alcohol and drugs, significant problems in their intimate relationships, including difficulties with intimacy, and commonly going from abusive relationship to abusive relationship with them believing that's all they deserve. This type of abuse destroys lives, and given the nature of the victim in the case of Huckle, it could lead to 50, 60, 70 years of suffering. This is what Richard Huckle created for each and every one of the children, all to get his sick kicks and to gain the approval of other deviant predators he was connected to online. In terms of a little bit of a template, child sex offenders often have difficulties with their social skills, which means they struggle to form connections with people their own age, including intimate partnerships with adult women. They target children because the power disparity makes them feel better about their pathetic lives. Unfortunately, so-called sex tourists travel to impoverished areas and abuse the children, knowing that there are almost no safeguards or measures in place to protect them, and they can basically have an endless supply of victims. I think that Huckle likely began viewing child pornography at a very young age, and when he went to Namibia as a teenager, a country where almost half of the population live in poverty, he saw how easily he could gain access to children in disadvantaged areas, and then he likely came back to the UK and fantasised about how easily he could rape children in these places and looked for opportunities overseas to do this. It's clear that Huckle was proud of his behaviour and wanted to guide others and he made a name for himself amongst those who victimised and abused children. These are the worst types of people in the world, but to Huckle, they were his acolytes, the people who give him praise and a sense of belonging, again in contrast to his sad, pathetic existence. The many, many children he abused were solely for him to gain sexual gratification, a sense of power and control and fame and fawning from his paedophile network. He didn't care about the lifelong wounds that he caused these children. I've not read about the physical injuries he must have caused to these children, but the pain they were subjected to, especially the very young children and babies, is something I can't get my head around. However, I think this was past the point and that Huckle was a sadist. It was noted in court documents that the distress of the victims was obvious in the videos. I think Huckle enjoyed causing pain to these children, destroying their tiny bodies. He also urinated on them, an act of complete degradation. Many of these children clearly had nothing, hence why they were living in orphanages, but they at least had their innocence, and Huckle robbed them of this. Richard Huckle was a remorseless, sick, twisted individual. He pleaded guilty, but wanted it on his terms, including watching the videos he made again, clearly trying to get his sick kicks in one last time before he was sent to prison forever. The thing that really, really makes me angry 
is his pathetic statement of remorse given in court. It's victim blaming 101. Blaming his immaturity and the attention of the children he abused for his actions. So basically saying, these children were flirting with me, or even spoke to me, so how was I supposed to know they didn't want to have sex with me? I would have been curious to hear Huckle's explanation as to what signals or attention he got from a three-year-old child or a six-month-old baby which made him think they wanted to have sex with him. Absolute bullshit. No remorse. Just a callous, evil, psychopathic excuse for a man. And as for holding his hands in prayer whilst he was sentenced, how about praying for the lives you destroyed? I have covered and will cover some pretty evil people, but I'm not sure anything is going to top Richard Huckle. I, for one, don't shed a tear that he's now dead. This was a heavy case, and I want to thank you for watching it to the end with me. So what are your thoughts about the crimes of Richard Huckle? I want to thank you for watching, and for your continued support. Please subscribe to the channel, and let me know any thoughts for future videos. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.